When done, press spacebar to continue. Okay, so RPM should be between 62 and 78, 80%, or right about 70, 72. Our EGT should be about 500 degrees Celsius. the combined hydraulic pressure, switch the engine crank switch to L for left engine, but without moving the left throttle to idle. When the combined hydraulic pressure reaches 3000 PSI, switch the engine crank back to off. Press spacebar when done. Good enough. As we say, good enough for government work. Now, with the left engine spooled down again, switch the hydraulic transfer pump switch to normal. This should pressurize the combined side from the right engine and maintain a pressure between 2400 and 2600 PSI. When correct, set the hydraulic transfer pump switch to shut off. Also, if it does not pressurize the combined side within 10 seconds, immediately set the hydraulic transfer pump switch to shut off. When done, press spacebar to continue. Next, start the left engine the same way you started the right one. 
As a reminder, the engine instruments should read RPM 62% to 78%, EGT 500 degrees Celsius nominal, fuel flow 950 to 1400 pounds per hour nominal, nozzle position 100%, oil 25 to 35 psi nominal, 15 minimum, combined hydraulic pressure 3000 psi. Spinning up the left engine. There she goes. With both engines now running, order the plane captain to disconnect the starter air. Cycle the air source switch to left engine, right engine, and both engines and verify cockpit airflow at all three positions. Then leave it in both engines. Once done, set the hydraulic transfer pump switch to normal and close the guard. Chief, turn off the ground power. Ground power is now off. Okay, so air source switched. Uh, I'm gonna turn the cable disconnect here. Okay, so we've normalized. We're normalized. Looks like we're normalized. No, don't go away. I need to do the switches. Okay. And we'll go over here. It's now time to tell Jester to start the INS alignment. This process can take up to eight minutes depending on conditions, so it's best to start it as soon as possible after engine start. It's dependent on the parking brake to be set and will stop if that is released. To see what Jester sees and how the alignment is progressing, turn on the HSD and set it to TID repeat to see what he sees on the TID. When you see data on the HSD TID repeat, Bring up the Jester command wheel and select desired INS alignment quality. In this case, select Fine. You will now see Jester enter the required parameters for INS alignment and then select the alignment mode. When the INS starts alignment, the TID repeat shows a status bar with a symbol moving left to right with extreme right being a fine align. The numbers to the left of the status bar show minutes and tenths of minutes in alignment. Okay, aborting startup. We are now free to continue our checklist. Press spacebar to continue. Turn on the stability augmentation system. Set all three SAS switches to on. Set the master test switch to emergency generator. The no-go light should illuminate for about one second before the go light illuminates. Press spacebar when done.
When setting the master test switch back to off, we simultaneously check the voltage monitor control unit, or VMCU. The following light should illuminate for just under two seconds. Pitch stab one and two, roll stab one and two, yaw stab, Oscar Papa, and out. Spoilers, horizontal tail authority, rudder authority, autopilot, and mock trim. Set the master test switch to off now and check for the lights. The rudder authority light will not go out until reset by the master reset push button, and pitch and roll SAS switches will now have turned off. Turn both on again. The AHRS light might also illuminate momentarily. Huh. Press spacebar when done. Next up is to check the Augmenter Fan Temperature Control, or AFTC. Begin by setting the left engine select switch to SEC. The left engine SEC light should illuminate on the caution panel, and the left nozzle position indicator should point below zero. Then, set it back to PRI. The caution light should go out, and the nozzle position indicator should now show 100%. Repeat for the right engine using right engine select. Press spacebar when done. Yep, we're both working. So that, we're going down, nozzle indicators. Nozzle indicators are right here. Now, set the wing external transfer switch to off. Set UHF function selector to both. Set TACAN function selector to transmit and receive. Turn on the ARA-63 power switch, the remaining displays, control switches, and the radar altimeter by scrolling up on the control knob. Check that the pitch trim is zero on the surface's position indicator. With no control input, it should read at zero degrees. Erect the standby attitude gyro by clicking the control knob and turning it until the indicator matches the current attitude. The standby attitude gyro should be erected at least two minutes before takeoff. Then, press the master reset push button. Press spacebar when done.
extend the speed brake partially and retract it, then extend it fully and retract it. Check for a fluctuation on the stabilizers to verify the automatic trim is in operation when the speed brake is extended. Also, fully extend the refueling probe by setting the switch to all and then retract it. Check for normal operation and that the transition light illuminates when in between the extended and retracted positions. Finally, cycle the windshield air switch. Press spacebar when done. Set the wing external transfer switch to off and depress the master reset push button. Press spacebar when done. It's now time to extend the wings and check the control surfaces. It's important to note that as we will extend the wings, it is absolutely critical to verify that the wings will clear any obstructions present. If not, or if you're doing a carrier startup, this will be done later. I will inform you at what point the checklist continues when doing that kind of startup. As we have the space, we will now do it anyway for instructional purposes. Move the emergency wing sweep handle to the fully forward position, 20 degrees. Engage the spider detent by pushing the handle down and close the guard. Again, this will move the wings. Select Wing Sweep Auto, if necessary, to sweep them fully forward. As the wings come out of oversweep, the horizontal tail authority light will illuminate momentarily as the stabilizer locks disengage. There they are. Press the Master Reset button to reinitialize the automatic wing sweep program. Press spacebar when done. Set external lights according to the situation and check their operation. Fully extend flaps and slats by moving the lever fully. Set the master test switch to stick SW. The spoiler light will illuminate and all spoilers should fall down. After deflecting the stick more than one inch in each direction, the go light should illuminate. Turn off the master test switch. 
Press space bar when done. Set the anti-skid spoiler brake switch to off. Retract the flaps and slats. Use the thumb wheel to extend the maneuver flaps and slats fully. Now select 50 degrees sweep with the wing sweep mode switch. You shouldn't be able to move the commanded position to more than 50 degrees. If you can, immediately select auto. Retract the maneuver flaps and slats fully with the thumb wheel and then select bomb mode with the wing sweep mode switch. Check for normal maneuver flap and slap retraction. Press spacebar when done. Now, open the guard, pull up the emergency wing sweep handle, and move it to 68 degrees, and hold it there. When the oversweep indication appears, move the handle to oversweep and push it in. Select auto on the wing sweep mode switch, and depress the master reset push button. Set the anti-skid spoiler brake switch to bolt if not on the carrier. As we are on the carrier, we'll leave it in off. Press spacebar when done. At this point, the checklist for carrier startup or startup without wing movement continues. To press the SET knob on the radar altimeter to initiate the built-in test. All right. Well, this the is display a lot should of indicate fun. 100 feet, and the green light should illuminate. <laughs> Release, and the display should show zero feet. The altitude low light should illuminate, and a warning tone should be heard by both pilot and Rio. Check displays for desired mode. Check IMU heading on HUD, VDI, HSD, and BDHI. Note that until the INS alignment is complete, these displays will be degraded. Check okay. flight instruments for normal operation. Press spacebar when ready. Alright, so press set now on altimeter to initiate fifth display should be K100. It's not Before we can taxi, we have to wait for the INS to finish alignment. If the HSD TID repeater still shows the INS alignment page, wait until it's done and Jester tells you that you're ready to taxi. When ready, press spacebar to continue. The aircraft startup is now complete and you're ready to taxi. This concludes this lesson. Note that you can also practice the startup procedure with the help of Jester-assisted startup. Try it out, for example, in an instant action cold start mission. Sure. Simply select Assisted Startup from the Jester menu, and he will read you each item of your checklist and guide you through the procedure. Okay. Feel free to continue familiarization of the cockpit controls and practicing taxiing. Otherwise, exit the mission using Escape and then exit. Well, we're going to... Find out what that is. Access commands, compass.
flight control. Gears, brakes, okay. Gear down, we know that. Brakes. Up, retract, speed brake, wheel brake. W, okay. One quick flight and then here you take off. Now I don't need to do a tutorial, otherwise it'll uh, take off. Yeah, yeah, I know. They don't swim very well. A full company for battle group. I was very surprised to find them laying around in boxes. I haven't, I haven't. It's amazing when you start going through stuff what you find. I still have a whole Napoleonic army to put together. I have the 24 foot for Ishlandwana and Rourke's Drift. I have married and unmarried Zulus. I have some World War II stuff. I have modern stuff. I need somebody who can hobby for my hobby. All right, let's kick this pig.
Mobs 038.70, Angels 7.3, State 7.0.
the pilot. Navigation assistance. Navigation assistance. Navigation okay. assistance.
field. One, one. Request navigation assistance.
must be blacked out. Not good. Not good. Just turn. Well, into the sea we go. Yes, it was a very steep approach. I tried to punch up, but I couldn't get in the back of the cockpit to uh, initiate the procedures. Well, that does going to do it for me. I have gone down in a blaze of glory like I normally do. Um, very interesting game. This is DCS World. Um, I added on... F-14, it comes with a uh, P-51 and a Russian plane, I believe, and then you can add on other planes, yeah, uh, C-25, P-51, um, there. The only disadvantage to this game, and I'm going to exit out so I can kill the sound, the only disadvantage to this game is the aircraft are extremely expensive. Um, when you go into Steam, hey, it took some awesome pictures though. Um, when you go into Steam, the F-14 um, was eighty dollars just for the add-on for the F-14. Oh, there's a summer sale on Steam. Ooh, I'll have to check that out. Let's let's uh, pull up the Steam. It's all right, puppy. Okay, let's go to the store. And I'll bring it over here so you guys can see it. And let's look for DCS. Oh, of course. I bought it last week, and it's on sale this week. It never fails. But, they're, I mean, they're still pretty pricey. F-16 Viper is $63. Uh, you can get a Normandy World War II map, um, a Harrier. I got that one. Oh, that one isn't on sale, so it's okay. I don't feel so bad now. A Hornet, a Huey, which I'll definitely pick up at some point, a Warthog. Um, yeah. And you can play it, you know, against everybody. I know, holy crap, $80. That's more than most whole games. I agree with you. I had huge sticker shock when I saw that. But, I mean, the... The modeling is excellent. Uh, the game itself, DCS World, is free. So you know you're going to pay for it some way or another. So the basic game is free. Um, but, of course, you want to add on to anything else, like a MiG-29, even a Gazelle. Um, a combined arms, any of that stuff, you know, it's going to cost you. Um, so it is what it is. If you're an uh, aviation... Um, yeah, I mean, you get a vir you, it's go back right. You get a virtual co cockpit with all switches and such working. Uh, Jim, I think you missed. I was going through a cold start of the F-14, and you literally have to do all systems checks, all APU startups, um, everything just like in a real plane. And it took quite a while. I mean, Scoback must have got a lot of painting done listening to me in the go. Where's that switch? What does that do? Um, in virtual, it's also set up for virtual reality. So if you have like an Oculus, um, you can actually, you know, like sit in a chair and literally manipulate the buttons and dials with your fingers, you know, with the Oculus. Um, so I'm definitely going to try and get one of those. But um, yes, expensive. Yes. Is it worth it? I'm holding reservations on that one until I actually get to enjoy playing it. Um so we'll see. But there's all kinds of add-ons and campaigns and those kind of things. So we'll leave it at that. Um, Jim, are, I, I'm sorry. I don't know if I caught it. Were you going to stream tomorrow? I know. I wanted to buzz the tower so badly. War Thunder is nice for just the fly around shooting fun. Oh, I, you know, I think I had that at one time. 
Uh, wasn't planning it. Okay, well, we're still on break. I just didn't uh, know because if you were going to, I would uh, put up stuff, you know, on Facebook and everything. So um, people are, were advised well ahead of time. And if you're not, no big deal. Like I said, this is a very impromptu thing. I had a little bit of time. I got done with some schoolwork and um, Dawn's off at a meeting at work till late. I think she just literally got home. It's 917 here. And um, so, yeah. Jim, I am definitely looking forward to the next time we can play a war game. I had so much fun the other day playing uh, Valor and Victory, the Vietnam. And it wasn't just because I won. I mean, that was such a close game. I Honestly, I don't know who was going to win that game, you know, at the end there. Uh, I honestly didn't think I won. Um, that I think it was pure luck at, at some points. So I am definitely interested in playing a, another game with you at some point. Um, anybody who's watching this or will be watching this later, you definitely have to check out some of these games. They are amazing. Um, so if you're a serious war gamer, you know, in the traditional sense, uh, definitely check out some of the stuff he's doing. I have uh, bought Lock and Loaded, uh, Day of Heroes, which is the Mogadishu thing for Lock and Loaded, which is a hex encounter game. Um, and the other thing is, is they're coming out with a computerized version of it. And at some point, hopefully I get a copy and then we can use that as well. But Jim's work is amazing. He does everything himself. So I, I never knew you could do that kind of stuff in um, Excel. It, it blows my mind. So, all right, guys. Well, until the meantime, uh, we'll talk to you soon. Um, if we don't see you, I'm going to be off to Colorado next week for Independence Day. Or as my friends over in the UK would like to call it, tra Traitor's Day or Treason Day. Um, so, we will see you all soon. And you guys have a happy 4th. Valor and Victory War game videos will be going up next week. Part 1 is on YouTube now. Excellent. So, we'll see you guys. Uh, very soon. Take care and happy 4th of July.